to start, I want to thank our partners here today for the third annual downtown day, including legislators, AARP, Efficiency Vermont, Vermont Natural Resources Council, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, Vermont Housing Finance Agency, and Vermont mayors, municipal officials, downtown board members, executive directors, volunteers, and business owners who work every day to keep our downtowns and villages strong. And considering we're here today to announce recipients of the Main Street grants, I'd also like to thank Beth Rusnock from the National Life Group Foundation, as well as Dan Smith and Liz Gamash from the, uh, from the Vermont Community Foundation for their hard work and investment in this new program. Finally, I want to give special thanks to the Preservation Trust of Vermont, Paul Bruin and his staff for all the work they've done to strengthen Vermont's downtown and villages for over 30 years. Public-private partnerships like the Main Street, Gr Main Street Grants give a big boost to our work to grow the economy uh, strengthen and strengthen our downtowns and villages. And I think we can all agree the work to revitalize these areas is much more productive and effective when we work together as a team. Before we announce the grant winners, uh, here are a few stats that show the impact of our downtowns. In the last year, the 23 state designated downtown communities have documented nearly $59 million in public and private investment, 127 new housing units, 47 new and expanded businesses, and more than 200 new jobs were created within the downtown districts. So thank you for your hard work and to transform Vermont's downtowns and villages across the state. It's really impressive to see these achievements. I also want to talk briefly about uh, H-766, a bill that achieves many items I proposed in my budget. It will help build and grow stronger communities and make housing ownership and renovation affordable for our workforce, a major goal of, of myself and my administration. H-766 does three things. First, it helps more first-time home buyers by increasing funding for VHFA's down payment assistance program. Uh, 600 first-time home buyers across every county have already used the program, uh, with each buyer generating about $40,000 in economic benefit to Vermont. Studies have shown that the lack of a down payment is a significant barrier to home ownership. And without this proposed increase, BHFA will need to cut this important program in half. Second, it increases the amount of downtown and village ta center tax credits, which are proven to be one of the most effective revitalization tools in helping renovate commercial buildings in our downtowns and village centers. Based on an analysis by the Vermont Agency of Commerce, on average, every $1 of credit brings in an additional $18 in investments. Third, H-766 proposes a new homeowner tax credit built on the proven framework uh, from, uh, for the downtown and village credits. After listening to hundreds of employers and Vermonters across the state, what I consistently heard was that one of the barriers to attracting more families and young professionals is decent affordable housing. But a challenge, a challenge that we have is that in many communities, the cost to repair and update existing housing stock exceeds the value of the building. Without tools or fundings to close that gap, property values decline in many communities. Despite the $37 million housing bond and work of many partners to improve and increase the supply of housing in Vermont, there continues to be a gap between the need and availability of housing. Without an increased investment in housing, this gap will only grow. The homeowner tax credit will create more and better housing options uh, close to where people work, go to school, and shop. This innovation and this investment will support good paying construction and renovation jobs and is key to attracting the young families and workforce needed for businesses and communities to thrive. I want to thank Representatives Baser, Botsow, Marcotte, and Kimball, as well as members of House Commerce Committee for their work on these initiatives. And thanks to Representatives Ansel, 
Toll, and Keenan for their help to ensure this bill makes it to the House floor and into the Senate. Back in November, I was pleased to join with National Life CEO uh, to announce the inaugural Main Street Grant Program. These grants are another example of National Life's commitment to supporting its community. I'm proud and thankful for the growing state, local, and, and private and uh, public uh, partnerships working to build stronger, more vibrant communities. And I'd now like to introduce Beth Rusnock, uh, president of the National Life Group Foundation, who will announce the seven communities sharing over $85,000 uh, in Main Street grants. Beth. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. Late in 2017, we opened enrollment for a pilot program through the National Life Group Foundation. This program, as the governor mentioned, is called Main Street Grants, and it's intended to support the good work that's happening in so many of our Vermont communities. We reached out to see if our friends at the Vermont Community Foundation, the Preservation Trust of Vermont, and the Vermont Department of Housing and Community Development would like to partner with us, and fortunately, they said yes. It's an ongoing testament to the collaborative spirit of funders in this state. After carefully reviewing 29 applications that were submitted, we, we whittled it down to seven. And this morning, we're pleased to announce the recipients of our first Main Street grants. It's worth noting that National Life started with a budget of $50,000, but after consideration, we actually upped it to $70,500. The Vermont Community Foundation then provided an additional 15000 to sweeten the deal, and we're very appreciative of that as well. So in all, $85,500 in grants will be awarded to the, the following Vermont communities in alphabetical order. Barrie, Bennington, Montpelier, St. Albans, St. Johnsbury, Waterbury, and Wilmington. So congratulations to all of these communities. This money will support projects that range from the restoration of a much needed community center to bike racks, to lighting, and things like wayfinding signage. It's been a humbling and gratifying experience to not only work with Dan Smith and his team at VCF, as well as Paul Baroon, also to learn about the many creative projects that serve as a reminder that Vermont is definitely the place to live and work. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dan Smith from the Vermont Community Foundation. Well, let me pause there and just, uh, I think we should give Beth and the National Life Group a round of applause for their commitment to start. Uh, I, I will say, um, just real quickly, I, I, I think that the infrastructure of the next decade is really about partnership and finding ways to work together. And so National Life's vision for this downtown program and the Main Street Grants program is really an opportunity for public, private, and then corporate philanthropy to work together in an objective that we all share, and that is strong and healthy and dynamic and vital communities. The mission of the Vermont Community Foundation is to inspire philanthropy and to bring people and resources together to make a difference in Vermont. We believe that Vermont's at its best when Vermonters are at their best. That means they have access to equal access to opportunity, and that when they walk down the streets of their communities, they're inspired and they feel a sense of potential. And the work of everybody in this room who's part of a downtown association is contributing to that end. Regardless of whether they saw funding in this program today, their work goes on in building uh, healthy and vital communities that offer people inspiration and a sense of potential. So uh, we as a foundation are humbled to partner with National Life and to help these folks pursue these objectives because doing so will level the playing field across the state and allow young people in that next gener generation of Vermonters to see a future here in this state that inspires them and connects them to place. So we're excited to partner, we're excited about the path forward, and we're uh, humbled to work alongside you all in terms of changing the dynamics in Vermont communities. So thank you very much for the day, and thank you very much for your leadership, thank Governor. You. Thank you very much, Dan. Take care. With that, We'll open it up to questions, if we could uh, maybe f focus on the, the topic at hand first, and then we can excuse a few people if you want to go into other areas. There might even be some people here that can answer the questions for you. How are those grants getting divided up? Is that going to be an even amount for community, or? 
That's a great question. So it was uh, determined by need. Um, there, was a, there, were, there was a criteria that we actually followed. So it was uh, the need in the community, the project itself, when it would be finished, um, so on and so forth. So the grants in size uh, range from over $20,000 to a little over $5,000. Has the money been distributed yet? It should be arriving in uh, people's offices probably as we speak. <laughs> Uh, is there anything in H-766 that's not there right now that you're going to ask legislators to include in it? Uh, I can't think of anything. Um, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how it goes through the legislative process and uh, if anything gets dropped off. But at this point in time, I think we're, we're in good shape. Is 766 still in committee, or has it been voted I out? I believe it's been voted out of committee, uh, and it go into the, in the House, uh, and then it will go to the floor. Uh, Maybe appropriations first. It's in ways and means right now. It's in ways and means? Okay. Uh, and then it will make it way to the floor. Then, of course, over the Senate. Well, thanks for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at this point, if you want to ask any other questions. Oh, sure. Do you have a question for Beth? Absolutely. Um, Take the next 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Your president and CEO announced at the last press conference about the Main Street grants that he was going to launch a, a campaign against Hunger. That's correct. Can you tell us any more about where he is with that process, please? Yes, I'd be happy to. So we are diligently working on that, and again, in collaboration with a number of different nonprofits, businesses, um, uh, government organizations in the state of Vermont, because our goal, um, hopefully, would be to see no children hungry in this state over the course of, to be determined, frankly. So there's a lot of work to be done, but there's a lot of good work that's already happening here, um, what we've learned. So at this point, we're in discussions, and I would just say stay tuned, because we hope to make an announcement within the next month or two about the status of that. All right, thank you. You're welcome. With that, if you uh, feel free to leave, or you can stay right here if you'd like. <laughs> you still think uh, it's prudent to ask uh, the legislature to do more on school funding? Oh, in light of your success last week at yeah. Halifax. Uh, absolutely. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to say how uh, grateful I am to all the school boards out there that did tremendous work in all the communities. Uh, that voted for their budgets. We came in. It exceeded uh, my expectations. As you know, I'd asked them to uh, keep growth under the growth rate calculation. We thought it was around 2.5% at that time, uh, and they came in well below that. So we're halfway there, or almost halfway there from the nine cents we started with. At this point in time, uh, I still believe there's areas that we can save for the future. It's not just about uh, this year. It's about savings in the future so that we don't find ourselves in the same position we're in today. Uh, having, uh, again, having said that, there are a number of initiatives that we put on the table uh, that could be, I think, beneficial for the future, whether it's a statewide health care contract for, for teachers. Um, and uh, as well as those ratios I've talked about, uh, they're working on, uh, as I understand it, uh, maybe some uh, special ed provisions that could be helpful in the future. And my goal is to uh, come up with a plan where we don't have an increase in statewide property taxes this year. I believe it's achievable. Uh, and I, again, we're halfway there. The, the school boards and have done their job and the communities have done their job uh, now we need to find ways uh, to to lower the cost for future uh, future budgets what about the argument that the that the voters have looked at these budgets approved them and they don't want you or lawmakers or anyone else in Montpelier tinkering with them anymore well I think I can for every person you find there I can find someone who doesn't want their property taxes to increase either uh, so uh, I think there is a balance, uh, and I think that the, with the budgets that were presented, uh, they did, again, remarkable work. I'm very grateful to them for doing so. Uh, but there are other savings uh, in this inefficient system where we can, we can be more effective, more efficient. Uh, so that, again, it seems like every year we're in the same uh, position where they say it's too late 
uh, to do anything here because all the budgets have been made. Uh, so to, to counter that, we need to do something now in, in order to uh, save money for next year. And if it's uh, something like the statewide health care contract, if that would uh, be helpful in future years, then we should do it now uh, so that we can, we can save that money in years to come. There's some lawmakers who are worried about a replay of what happened at the end of the last legislative session. Um, are you willing to, again, use the budget as a leverage point to get what you want on education spending? Well, again, I think I've been clear uh, that we are going to get through this session without increasing taxes and fees. And I would consider uh, property taxes as being one of them. Um, Forty plus million you'd have to share from what was passed on town meeting day. Well, again, there are other ways, other approaches, other ways to, to get to the, to the end result. Um, 40, $40 million, well, as I said, statewide health care uh, contracts for the future. You, you all estimated $3 million for FY19 if you did that. Right, but for future years, when we go back, I said $26.2 million last year. Uh, and we didn't, uh, we didn't assume those savings as a result. So uh, had we done that last year, we, we would be almost home right now. So if we take that initiative and some of the uh, special ed uh, issues that they're, they're working on, the PICUS report uh, pointed out a, new, a number of uh, hundreds of million, or a hundred million dollars, I believe, in, uh, in special ed. Maybe I may have that figure wrong. Uh, but, but there are substantial savings to be had in special education. So maybe it can't be done for this year, but it could be done in future years. So we'll take a, take a look. I mean, there's other ways to approach this. I want to be sure that we get out here. I don't believe Vermonters can afford a tax increase. So I believe that there's a, there's a way to do that when you consider a $6 billion budget, $40 million away. Governor, what do you think of the way that lawmakers have, have adapted or changed your plan for responding to the federal tax bill? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, I obviously uh, believe our approach is better. Uh, I don't. Uh, they've merged two totally different uh, subjects together. Uh, that's concerning. Uh, but as well, the way they, they uh, dealt with uh, the formula, so to speak, I don't believe is, uh, is uh, fair to Vermonters. And I believe that our approach is better. Uh, we'll make our case. It's still, it still just came out of one committee. It's going through multiple other committees before it gets to the House floor. And then we'll go over to the, to the Senate and we'll, we'll continue along the way to make our case. What about what you think isn't fair? Well, it's just the way we thought we had an uh, approach uh, that would give uh, the most benefit uh, to all categories and, and leave people harmless. And we worked very hard on that. The tax uh, commission uh, commissioner and, and uh, some of the folks at the, the uh, uh, tax uh, um, department uh, worked very hard to come up with a formula that was really would leave people harmless. Mm -hmm. uh, and we just think it's a better approach. So their their plan would harm some tax. I believe so. I, I believe it's not. Uh, it doesn't treat them the same as what we had contemplated. There are a lot of students across the state that are planning tomorrow to leave the classroom, walk out, um, to call for new gun legislation. Um, do you support? those demonstrations on behalf of part of the students? I think it should be done on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I believe that the, the schools have done that. It appears, uh, from what I've seen, uh, taking different approaches. Uh, school safety, obviously, is important uh, to us in, in all kinds of different ways, and certainly on that day as well. So I would leave it to the uh, to the schools themselves and the districts to. So what's your message to the youth of Vermont? That we, I, I believe that their message has been incredibly important. Uh, throughout the nation in this regard. And had it not been for them, we not, might not be in the position where we're even talking about this at this point in time. So I think it's important that they exercise uh, their right and their, and their thoughts uh, because uh, they're the future and we need to listen to them. Um, so I, uh, I believe, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, they should be, be exercising their rights. The, uh, it doesn't sound like those rights are universal, though. I'm sorry? Those rights aren't universal, then. You're saying that exercise your rights as long as your principal is okay with it. Well, I just think that uh, it's, it's an obligation of every school uh, to determine what's the safest manner and the most appropriate manner to do that. Uh, uh, so I, I, I'm going to leave it to the schools and districts to figure that out. Obviously, you didn't, uh, you didn't get to sign a gun bill of any sort before the break. 
now we seem to be starting over. Are you, uh, what's, what are your hopes right now? I wouldn't say we're starting over. Uh, obviously, their uh, bills have gone from both the Senate to the House and the House to the Senate. Uh, so they're continuing. Uh, it may not have been as quick as I'd hoped, uh, but uh, at this point, point in time, uh, we're still having the conversation. So I think it's important. The Do you have any favorites? Um, well, you know, I, I've, uh, I've agreed with both uh, bills uh, that have uh, uh, initiatives uh, that came out of the House. I think the, the Senate provision on 221 uh, was uh, came out a 30-0 vote. Uh, has a wide uh, amount of support, um, and I would be okay with that uh, version as well. So I hope uh, the Senate will take a look at the 442 and uh, the second provision of that and, and move forward with some initiative there as well. The president seems to be moving forward with this idea of arming teachers. Will you take any steps here in Vermont to prevent that from happening? Um, I, I'm not sure that we need to prevent it from happening. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense for us to move in that direction. There are other initiatives we can take to, to make schools safer. Uh, we've moved forward uh, with uh, asking the state police and local law enforcement to assess the schools. We should have uh, something back by the end of the month and have a report by mid-April uh, that would uh, to point to areas that uh, where we could uh, uh, take immediate steps to make schools safer. So uh, in terms of that, I'm not sure that we need to because it, as I as I read uh, the president's statement, I believe it's something, something to the effect that for those willing. Uh, so. Well, so if there's some federal provision that allows teachers to carry guns on public school campuses, you won't do anything in Vermont to intervene? Well, I'm not sure that that would uh, hold. Um, I, I'm not sure that we would do that in Vermont. I just don't, I, I just don't think it would work uh, here in Vermont. Uh, but that's my opinion. We'll work through the legislative process. But, so if, but if there is some provision in federal either rule I, I'm or not law? Sure, I, I'm not sure that, again, they can just unilaterally do that uh, without some uh, acceptance by, uh, uh, by um, the districts and so forth. So I just don't see it happening in Vermont, to be honest with you. The Department of uh, Labor just released some new statistics about job growth. Uh, shows that there are jobs being added to the Vermont economy, but not enough uh, more workforce to fill all of these new positions that are coming into the state. So what do you plan on doing to address that? Uh, well, we hope, uh, again, we have an initiative, the Think Vermont initiative uh, that we've put forward. Uh, we're hoping, still hoping, uh, that the, uh, the legislature will uh, will look uh, favorably upon that because it's important. Uh, and, and again, as I've said, there now seems to be jobs available. Uh, we have a workforce shortage. Uh, we need more people here. Uh, we need uh, more workers to fill those jobs. Uh, so, um, so we need to take some steps in order to do that. And we think the Think Vermont uh, initiative uh, is uh, valuable in, uh, in moving forward with that. Uh, a year ago around this time, there were people who, who were anxious about the new car inspection system, the AVIF system. Um, do you have any indication of how that's going? Have those concerns died down, or how's that going in your view? You know, no, I think we need to make some improvements, and uh, we're working on that. Uh, we're working on a simplification of the inspection manual itself, uh, trying to condense that. Uh, we're working uh, with the, the legislature in that regard, and, uh, and so it still needs some work. Um, so we're... Uh, we should be um, uh, finalizing that uh, very soon uh, and uh, hopefully either work its way through the legislative process or go through uh, uh, rules in order to do that. But we have a plan uh, that we're putting forth uh, to try and alleviate some of the some of the problem areas. Would it alleviate any of the costs either to the inspectors themselves or to customers? Um, I, th I believe uh, that it will uh, it'll be more cost effective uh, for the automobile owners. And will the changes relate to what you have to get fixed in order to get your car a sticker yes. and what you don't have to get fixed? Yeah, we're looking at uh, different approaches in terms of, of, of what is real safety uh, measures uh, from a safety standpoint, what really needs to be fixed. And, uh, and what might be advisable as well. So the manual uh, tries to clear up some of that and, and update uh, what has been uh, historic in some, some respects. So 
it, it simplifies the manual. Do you have any examples of things on your vehicle you wouldn't have to worry about as much? Uh, and I'm not going to get into that right now, but I will have very soon. <laughs> tire pressure sensors? Will tire pressure sensors? That's on the, on, the, on the table. Check engine light? That's on the table as well. Governor, on prisons, a few weeks ago you mentioned starting up an RFP process for the out-of-state inmates um, housed in Pennsylvania currently. I'm wondering if there's any update on that, if you have a uh, tentative plan for the future of those. Yeah, I don't have an update uh, at this point in time, uh, but I know we've moved forward on that. So I'd be happy to look into it and get that to you. On the firearms package, uh, have you had conversations with the House of leaders during the break uh, about keeping this on track? Uh, not uh, during the break. I did meet with the Senate leadership uh, this morning. I will be meeting with House leadership as well and continuing to have ongoing conversations with all the stakeholders. And S55, the background check slash 21-year-old buying you, that's what it is, uh, still support? Well, it's uh, again. I said I would. Uh, I would take a look at anything that uh, passes the legislature, and, and uh, I believe that there should be some mechanism to close whatever loopholes there are. Uh, but we'll see how it goes through. It wasn't as a, a, it was a 17-13 vote in the Senate. We'll see what happens in, in the House. But uh, look forward to the debate. What do you think would be going too far for Vermont on gun control? Um, we'll, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm not seeing anything at this point that goes too far that I've, uh, I've seen put into legislation, but we'll see what, what that might be. So S55 doesn't go too far? Um, you know, I haven't looked into the exact details of S55, uh, but, the, but just from uh, trying to, to do whatever we can to strengthen uh, background checks, I think is, uh, is, is a point that we need to, to move forward with. You're still open to discussing magazine size? Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything, uh, any bills that have, uh, have contemplated that. I, I'm not sure that that is something that's going to be considered this year, uh, but we'll see what comes out of the legislature. Have you reached out to any Republican lawmakers to try and encourage them to vote in favor of some of these measures that have historically uh, been opposed by it? Especially kind of House Republicans. I'm trying to educate as many of the stakeholders as possible about what uh, what I view as important uh, steps to take. Uh, I hope uh, that they see the merit in that, the common sense approach uh, that doesn't infringe upon the Second Amendment rights of anyone. I don't believe, and I would uh, I guess I would uh, ask that. Uh, we uh, take a look at that with an open mind and be objective. And so I've been talking one-on-one -on -one with different uh, lawmakers for, of both parties, uh, as well as people outside of the legislature that, uh, that might uh, see uh, misinformation uh, about what my stance is or, or is or isn't, uh, so that, uh, that I can uh, have a conversation about what I'm seeing as the, the issues. And I think that the steps, the action plan that we put forward uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, if we can assess the schools, I think school safety is important. Assess the schools, the $5 million grant uh, uh, process, uh, as well as uh, putting together this commission that I think is going to be important. We'll, we'll be doing that over the next few days. And then work on that uh, throughout the year to see if there's any other opportunities they may uh, our schools safe or make our communities safe as well because as we saw in Las Vegas uh, that wasn't in a school uh, but it left 59 dead uh, so we need to uh, to strengthen our communities and strengthen the process to make sure things of that nature don't happen in Vermont and I just want to be clear you're you are not discouraging students from walking out of class as a manner of expressing their opinion on I'm not discouraging them, but I am encouraging them uh, to work with their schools in order to do it in a thoughtful manner. Would you like to see the suite of gun stuff uh, uh, be as bipartisan as it could be? Absolutely. Uh, and I think that, uh, again, from my perspective, uh, any, nothing we're asking for or contemplating at this point in time infringes upon the Second Amendment. I think it's just a, a common sense approach uh, that fits Vermont. And I believe that, uh, that a bipartisan support would be important to me uh, in order to, uh, to move forward. Do you have guns? I do. What kind? All kinds. Um, 
I've, uh, you know, I've hunted and fished my entire life. I have a, a gun safe full of guns. Um, and uh, so I'm a believer in the Second Amendment, uh, and, I've, uh, and I will fiercely protect that. But uh, again, anything that we're putting forward, I don't believe infringes upon that right. Have you ever sold a, a gun to anybody privately without a background check? I have not, I've never sold a gun in my life. Uh, I seem to just collect them. Uh, it's, I remember receiving some from family members. So, yeah, I got my, my dad's first gun. Um, I remember buying my first shotgun at Wilson Support to the sports on the Barry Montpelier Road before it burned down. Um, and, uh, and it's just something that... Um, I just keep collecting. I like I like shotguns. I like bird hunting. Uh, so I've just been doing that over the years. Looks like you're uh, gonna have to shovel again. Are you tired of it again? No. I mean, we like to see uh, some of that revenue coming in. I mean, this is like uh, winter savings times here. Uh, we uh, have a, a another opportunity to bring people into Vermont and utilize uh, our slopes. And and I heard the other day. I think it was Sunday uh, that at 10 o'clock, I think Mount Snow shut down uh, the sales, which I thought was uh, interesting. They probably haven't done that for a while. So that's revenue falling from the sky? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know it's, it puts a lot of pressure, obviously, on, uh, on VTrans uh, and uh, their, uh, uh, all the, the workers that we have there uh, and all the hours they have to put in to clear it. But uh, again, we can't clear, uh, control the weather. Uh, but we can take advantage of, uh, of the good fortune in bringing more snow to the state uh, and uh, try and bring in more revenue. Are your indications so far that it's having that effect? I believe so. Uh, I think that uh, it is having that effect, and uh, we'll continue. I mean, this, this snowstorm this week uh, looks like it's going to be a beautiful weekend. Uh, we hope to get the word out that uh, we're a place that uh, folks from Boston and others who want to get away from their snow can come up here and, and have some fun with it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.